da sind wir. So, jetzt gibt es endlich mal wieder ein bisschen ähm, Zockerei hier. Und bei uns ist jetzt John Fuller, Senior Producer bei Avalanche. Yep. Und äh, hier hat uns, äh, hier hat uns, ich bin schon völlig durch mit den Sprachen, er hat uns äh, Mad Max mitgebracht. Um, who are you? I'm Evan. He's Evan. He's not allowed to speak. Uh, yeah, he, he don't even ha uh, have, have a mic, but uh, he will play the game. Um, good to have you here. So, um, John, yeah. great to have you here. So tell us a little bit, My how's pleasure. the Gamescom so far for you? How, how's the reception of the game? Gamescom has been great. Uh, we've had, we have like uh, massive queues down on the consumer floor. Yeah. People playing for uh, 20, 25 minutes. Uh, big smiles on everyone's face coming out. Um, people seem to have a lot of fun playing. Very good. It's 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 pretty full here. If you're watching from home, actually, it's good. Stay there <laughs> because <laughs> there's no more space here. But um, let's talk a little bit about this this fantastic game. I mean, uh, we've all seen the movie which came out like uh, in Germany f like two months ago. Ago. Yeah, and uh, I mean we're we both are huge movie buffs and uh, we loved the movie and I think it helped the game. How's your perception? Because it could have flopped the movie and it would maybe would have damaged your your game. How's your perspective yeah. on that? I mean I think uh, the big thing is that the before there was such a long time since any of the last the previous films yeah. um, that you know my generation probably has a quite romantic view of of Mad the Max old series. Mad Max films, yeah. but there's a lot of people that you know don't know who Mad Max is, don't know what the films are all about. So it was great just to get a refresh of mm -hmm. that vision and what this universe is all about. Um, so uh, I think that there's a huge amount of excitement uh, about Mad Max. I mean, he was one of the definitive original anti-heroes uh, that started a whole kind of generation of post-apocalyptic, you mm -hmm. know, dystopian, uh, Yeah, works of art. So um, there's a lot of excitement to play as Mad Max and to explore this universe and to just you know jump in. So when did you start developing this game? So it's been in production about three and a half years, just over mm. three and a half years, and uh, we're nearly at the end. We're coming out in three weeks. And we can see that um, this is actually um, footage from. The <laughs> is this almost the almost finished version that we we see now? Yeah, so this is probably about a month old, so we're mm -hmm. we're going to be uh, we're going to be on the shelf first of September. Um, And as we can see here now, yeah. um, you told us before you have been also working on Just Cause 2. I personally have worked on Just Cause 2, yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, we <coughs> talked about the similarities and yeah, the references of, the, yeah, for example, the director, uh, rector elements and and all the exploding and destroying stuff. Yeah, this is something you definitely want to have in the Mad Max game. So, I mean, if you, anyone who knows Avalanche Games knows that uh, we, we, want to, we want to drop you in a world and then we want to give you tools that you can experiment with and play with and interact with the world. Uh, we, ne we don't like, you know, level loading and backdrops and static locations that where you, you know, we want the world to surprise you basically and we want to encourage you to explore all of it and, and invent new Uh, ways to to uh, use the mechanics that we give you. Emergent gameplay is a term that we use quite often, um, and that's definitely true true of a title like Mad Max. Every time you have a vehicle combat encounter, it's never going to play out the same time or the same way twice, uh, because you know you have these the tools that uh, you have the environment, you have these you know emergent tools like the harpoon or the thunder sticks and and crazy explosions, lots of destruction. So. Yeah, <laughs> and we have now a complete. Uh, you no, know, we have Mel Gibson, the Mel Gibson Mad Max. Now uh, the, the Tom Hardy Mad Max is new, mm -hmm. and this one is yeah, something between them. Or well, this is our take. I mean, we 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 want you to feel like you are Mad Max. Um, so we're definitely not trying to uh, get you to feel like you know an actor from one of mm -hmm. the films or anything. Uh, obviously, there is a there's quite a dramatic story arc to this game, but because it's an open world game and we want you to explore, we want you to make major decisions like which, uh, which areas you're going to um, visit, how much you're going to invest in them, how much you're going to try and tear down the threat of Scrotus and his stranglehold on the world, uh, which strongholds you're going to try and forge alliances with, how much you're going to invest in them. And the more you invest, the more they will start to thrive and people will become healthy and set up workbenches and help you upgrade your vehicle and further your journey. So 
really you are in charge of your story as Max. Uh, and we want uh, even the magnum opus, uh, his, his uh, vehicle, signature vehicle, uh, that is also going to be re a reflection of the choices that you make and the journey that you have uh, as Max, because it's a, it's a major uh, you know, progression arc in the game as well. So you have to, to, to build up your own cars to, to reach farther uh, places on the map? Or? So uh, ultimately, Max's story is, is very similar every time. He just wants to escape and be left alone and not mm -hmm. be forced to uh, you know, interact with people and to fall in love. I know that or, feeling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the, you know, the <coughs> there's this term, the planes of silence but it's never really clear whether that's somewhere in his head where he can go to escape his demons or if it's a real physical place somewhere. Um, but uh, he, he needs, he's, he's left for dead early on in the game after an encounter with the, the warlord in this region, a guy mm -hmm. called Scabrous Scrotus, particularly evil dude. Mm -hmm. uh, he's left for dead, but he realizes without a vehicle, he's not gonna get very far. Yeah. Um, so he meets this chap here, Chumbucket, who's a wasteland blackfinger, a mechanic, an almost religiously fanatical uh, mechanic, who wants to build the best, the, the most radical wasteland war machine that anyone's <laughs> ever seen. Uh, but he realizes he's going to need Max, because Max is a survivor, he's good at combat, um, he can get to places where Chumbucket wouldn't dare to go. Mm -hmm. So they need each other, um, and uh, Max's journey is to get the parts necessary to get a, a, a vehicle or a means of survival that will take him from this area and uh, you know he can escape to some sort of solace. Mm -hmm. So here you see them um, sort of scouting out a location which is one of these uh, strongholds in the area um, resisting the stranglehold of Scrotus but this particular place is under attack by Scrotus forces. Uh, one of his lieutenants, uh, an even more heinous guy called Stankum. Um, so Max has decided that he's going to take on these, um, this battle and try to relieve the situation by taking down the catapults. Okay. In that way, he maybe can gain the confidence of Pink Eye and she will help him with some key information uh, or some upgrades Ooh. to... to uh, you know, uh, he, he actually wants to get a, a particularly powerful engine, a V8 engine, in the wasteland. He got more weapons than me yesterday. Well, he's one of the developers. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't experience the uh, sideburners no, yesterday, the side no? Burners, no. <laughs> and you got other, uh, something like the explosive spear? Uh, there's a uh, thunder stick launcher, which is called the Thunderpoon. That one there. <laughs> that one there I also used. Okay. But his car is better looking than mine, you see. So you, um, just in terms of gameplay, so you, are there like the typical RPG elements that you can level up or upgrade your stuff, or how does it work, or do you find, do you, you build your, your stuff on, on, on benches, or how do you progress in the game? Yeah, so um, maybe we can go into first person view there and see, uh, see some of the action from close by. Um, so, uh, there's, there's a couple of different progression loops. Obviously, we've got economies with food and water, um, scrap, um, ammo is scarce. You know, resources are generally scarce in the wasteland. Um, you can upgrade uh, your vehicle, and you will uh, quite a lot throughout the game. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole bunch of different choices that you can make, uh, and it's not about just finding as much stuff as possible and adding it on, you really need to sort of tinker and make trade-offs because certain vehicles are going to be good for certain things, um, but they will have weaknesses as well. Mm -hmm. So if you build a really um, heavy set vehicle with lots of armor, lots of defenses, you're not going to be able to outrun certain vehicles. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to get to all of the areas where you might find loot and valuable um, scrap and other resources. Um, you also won't be able to position yourself as nimbly in certain you know, uh, massive vehicle encounters like convoys and so yeah. on. Uh, and we actually provide a couple of ready-made templates for you um, called Archangels. Uh, that can, and at any stage you can go in and you know, make different choices about how your uh, magnum opus should look and behave mm -hmm. to, to you know, test out different combat styles in vehicle combat. Uh, 
Gesundheit. Uh, Max also has an upgrade uh, tree, you know, skills and abilities and combat buffs um, and yeah. things that help him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the more you uh, progress through the world, uh, we will throw different types of, you know, combat challenges at you, mm -hmm. different enemy types, and you're going to have to... Um, just evolve the way that you think about your vehicle and your combat options um, to, to tackle those. But I, yeah, as I saw yesterday, the world seems a little you know, or quite uh, like the world in the movie, in the movie from George Miller. Okay. Have you been in contact with him? Did you get some yeah, insights and some help and some, I yep. don't know, uh, for like example, some concept arts which helped you to create the world? Yeah, so we, we spent quite a long time, uh, or an intensive time period, uh, just steeping ourselves in the, uh, the, the vision of this world. We, we spent a long time discussing with George Miller, uh, what's the world all about? How does it function? What is authentic? What's not? Um, so we had a lot of cooperation early on. We actually internally built uh, what we call our Bible um, of things that uh, are true to the world and things that aren't true to the universe, you know, what stuff would never happen. Um, and everyone is forced to read that um, and get familiar with it. Then we set about making, you know, an original story, an original cast of weird and wonderful characters. Again, they're true to the universe. They're all based on this uh, cohesive um, idea of, it's really, you know, his exploration of uh, an apocalypse, how it happens and how do people react and behave when, when you strip away the, the structure and all of these things that you know, keep us behaving in a quote-unquote civilized way. Um, so uh, I think you'll find that it's very much a faithful representation of the Mad Max universe. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, original story, original characters, and the world we've built from scratch from the ground up, uh, hopefully to rival the best open worlds out there. So no Charlie's Theron. No Charlie's their own. Great. But, uh, there are some uh, connections to the movie. I've read about some minor or some small connections which remember or which reminds you on the movie, for example, um, that there are some war boys in, 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 the, in the game or some reference yeah. about the war boys. And can, I don't know if you can say something about it, but the main villain, he has also a connection to the movie. Yeah, so there are definitely a lot of elements that you will recognize uh, in common, but they're all sort of part of the lore and part of the, the uh, you know, original vision of this universe. So, um, uh, you know, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be faithfully representing uh, the, the vision of what Mad Max is and his universe if, the, if you couldn't see quite a lot of commonalities between the two. And how big is the whole world? Is it big as you know? People ask me this question every every day, and I don't know. I have I, I need to go back and measure it. Um, <laughs> we don't. We never really talk about like square miles or kilometers um, in at the studio. We uh, the, the engine supports an infinite world, so you can just keep on driving, and you won't fall off anywhere. Yeah, we won't stop you um, if you want. You you will run out of content, um, but. Uh, the, the world is constantly evolving throughout production and we, you know, we, we stretch things out, we move things in, we pull things around because it's all about seeing what kind of balance makes sense and what plays well and what gives the player you know, uh, enough sense of action but doesn't feel like it's contrived. And, and so we, we definitely want you to have as a player... Ouch. Uh, we definitely want as a player... Uh, we want you to have these calmer moments where you can just, you know, crest the hilltop, get out of your car and just appreciate these amazing vistas with, uh, you know, beautiful world. Like the moment on the balloon. Exactly. Yeah, when he went on the balloon, he kind of scouted, scouted the, the, um, the area, yep. sur surroundings and could uh, locate um, new Areas or yeah, so, so some strategic elements in the world um, we will show you if you go up and use those vantage outposts. Mm -hmm. um, and we give you some information about when you're, when you're high up, you can see, you can make um, observations about how difficult the camps might be. Um, and they are all major threat elements of Scrotus. Uh, if you choose to 
um, sort of uh, weaken Scrotus's stranglehold and reduce the threat in different regions, you will see certain things happening. Like, mm -hmm. for example, the strongholds will thrive, uh, friendly friendly uh, wastelanders will move into the camps and start producing scrap for you. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there are a bunch of stuff that you won't be able to um, to identify on the map from those vantage outposts because they're kind of organic, you know, random encounters mm -hmm. that happen all the time. And some of the stronghold leaders will give you um, uh, missions and assignments to do, and you can you can discover more about their their own backstory. What does he? Um, what did you do wheels, with the water there? Wheels. Lay down your arms. Let's you and me part. Yeah, so we, we fill up a canteen. Um, water is scarce, but there are, you know, in some of these populated places in the world, you can fill up a canteen, and uh, when you drink it, your your health gets. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's the bit, the health mechanic. You can also find well, call it food, but you know maggots and dog food and rats and lizards. It's good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like in second movie. So this guy, um, who is in the process of, of uh, terrorizing Pink Eye and, s and saying that he's going to eradicate all of her followers. Uh, Pink Eye? Uh, no, Pink Eye is in a wheelchair. Uh, that's Pink Eye there. And I asked the... I asked the guy who showed us the game yesterday also, have there ever been a moment or a period where you thought about, hmm, maybe we let them look like Tom Hardy, or was there never been the thinking? Not really. I mean, uh, like I say, it's uh, we want you to play. We want you to be able to sort of project your... It, it should feel like your journey. Um, it's a single-player game, but we want you to feel like you are Mad Max, but you're you become that anti-hero and so on. So uh, I think that um, we've done a, um, we've tried to do the best job to make it as, it should feel like the Mad Max universe. It's definitely Mad Max. He's got all of the traits and backstory and sort of, you know, emotional journey that Mad Max al always has in all of the films. But uh, you get to experience it firsthand. Sadly, okay. we're out of time. Yeah. But it Perfect finish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <with the> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, how many times you played it already? Uh, you know, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, John, thanks for yeah. being here Thank and showing much. us the game. Pleasure. Thanks um, for inviting us. Good luck for the uh, for the launch in three weeks. It is. Yeah, first of September. Yeah, first of September. Also, am 1. September kommt das Spiel raus. Um, ich finde es sieht super aus. Ist mal auf jeden Fall was anderes, also mal ein anderes Setting. I just said it, it looks different to. I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, sandbox games, but this looks unique in in its way, which I like. And I love the movie, so I will play it. Yeah, definitely. Maybe on screen after dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thanks Thank for much. being here and it. Um, have a nice rest, Gamescom. Will do. Jetzt kommt thanks was? Uh, Lego. Lego Dimensions. Lego Dimensions. Viel Spaß. Viel Spaß.